eligible persons are busy preparing and financializing their books of accounts. If you are eligible for expired retail filing, then some more preparation is pending according to the recent amendments in Schedule 3 of the Companies Act 2013. Not yet aware of the changes in the Schedule 3 amendments? Watch this video till the end to know. Hello everyone, I am Neha Thakur from Webtel. In this video, I am going to discuss the recent amendments applicable from financial year 2022 to 2023 in Schedule 3 of the Companies Act 2013 under Division 1 and Division 2. So stay tuned and before the starting this video, I request you to subscribe our YouTube channel Vector Electrosoft to get regular compliance updates. Let's start with the basic introduction about experimental finding and for better understanding, I am taking you to my screen. Today I am going to discuss about amendment in Schedule 3rd of the Companies Act 2013. So, as per Section 137, Subsection 1 of the Companies Act 2013, every company registered in India is required to file e-form forms like AOC4, AOC4 CFS, AOC4 XPRL, AOC4 NBFC, AOC4 CFS and BFS every year within a period of 30 days from the date of annual general meeting to registrar of companies with all the documents which are required to be or attached. Every company is required to comply with the Schedule 3 of the Companies Act 2013 for preparation of financial accounts. So, a list of new amendment is released via notification on 24th March 2021 under Schedule 3rd of the Companies Act 2013 under Division 1 and Division 2. It is applicable from financial year 2021 to 22 onwards. So, when we are preparing the books of accounts, it is important to understand the amendments before closing it. Rounding of figures appearing financial statement. So, rounding off is mandatory for Division 1 or Division 2 of companies. Rounding off needs to be done for all the companies based upon the total income of the company instead of turnover of the company. If company's total income is less than 100 crore rupees, so its nearest rounding off is 100, 1000, lakhs, millions or decimal and secondly if company's total income is 100 crore rupees or more its nearest rounding off is lakhs million crore or decimal so the next one is insertion of disclosure for shareholding of promoters disclosure of shareholding promoters and percentage of change during the year has been added for all the companies unbill dues shall be disclosed separately similarly trade receivable aging schedule for division 1 you have to disclose the details given in the table similar information shall be given where no due date of payment is specified in that case disclosure shall be from the date of the transaction unbill dues shall be disclosed separately And similarly for Division 2 of Trade Receivable Aging Schedule. Next one is Title Deeds of Immovable Property Not Held in the Name of the Company. The company shall provide the details of all the immovable property other than properties where the company is lessee and the lease agreements are duly executed in favor of the lessee whose title deeds are not held in the name of the company in format given below and where such immovable properties is jointly held with the others details are required to be given to the extent of the company share next one is 
disclosure on revolution of assets the company has revalued its property plant and equipment the company shall disclose as to whether the revolution is based on the valuation by a registered valuer as defined under rule 2 of the company's registered valuers and valuation rule 2017 Next one is disclosure on loans advanced to directors KMP and related parties Following disclosure shall be made where loans or advances in the nature of loans are granted to promoters directors KMPs and the related parties as defined under Companies Act 2013 either severally or jointly with any other person that are repayable on demand and second one is without specifying and terms or period of repayment next one is capital work in progress uh, for capital work in progress the following aging schedule shall be given so you have to disclose this capital work in progress aging schedule and total shall tally with capital work in progress amount in the balance sheet second one is for capital pro- work in progress whose completion is overdue or has exceeded its cost compared to its original plan following cwip completion schedule shall be given and details of projects where activity has been suspended shall be given separately next one is intangible assets under development for intangible assets under development following aging schedule shall be given so you have to disclose the given detail in the schedule and total shall tally with the number of intangible assets under development in the balance sheet similarly intangible asset under development whose completion is overdue or has exceeded its cost compared to its original plan following intangible assets under development completion schedule shall be given and details of projects where activity has been suspended shall be given separately details of benami property held where any proceedings have been initiated or pending against the company for holding any benami property under the benami transaction prohibition act 1988 45 of 1988 and the rules made there under the company shall disclose the following details of such property including year of acquisition amount thereof detail of beneficiaries and many more disclosure of borrowings where the company has borrowings from banks or financial institution on the basis of security of current asset it shall disclose the following first one is whether quarterly return or statement of current assets filed by the company with banks or financial institutions are in agreement with the books of accounts second one is if not a summary of reconciliation and reasons of material discrepancies if any to be adequately disclosed corporate social responsibility where the company covered under section 135 of the companies act the following shall be disclosed with the regard to csr activities amount required to be spent by the company during the year 
amount of expenditure incurred, shortfall at the end of the year, total of previous year shortfall, reason for shortfall, nature of CSR activities, detail of related party transaction, example contribution to a trust controlled by the company in relation to CSR expenditure as per relevant accounting standard. So these are the following shall be disclosed with the regard to CSR activities. Now we move to the next slide detail of cryptocurrency or virtual currency where the company has traded or invested in cryptocurrency or virtual currency during the financial year the following shall be disclosed profit or loss on transaction involving cryptocurrency or virtual currency amount of currency held as the reporting date deposit or advances from any person for the purpose of trading or investing in cryptocurrency virtual currency I hope you have understood about all changes amended in Division 1 and Division 2. Binami properties are cryptocurrency or virtual currency are now more important for government. Share this video with your friends and colleagues who are filing XPRN and ROC return for better understanding. I am sharing link in this description. If you found this video helpful, then visit the link mentioned in the description below and let us know in the comment section also you can comment if you have any doubts give a thumbs up and subscribe to our youtube channel next tuesday we will come up with another interesting video to improve compliance for you till then stay safe stay tuned with us for a better compliance journey